My overall impression is the law is poorly written. I think it's a mistake. I just think the church should not have given this permission. So what is the story here? What is Cardinal Fernandez saying and what is different than what was previously said by the same office? Very good. Yeah, you referenced the 2016 document. Cardinal Muller was in charge of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith at that time. And they received many questions from bishops and others about the practice of cremation. So in 2016, they said uh, that burial of the body is the preferred and normal practice. Cremation can be allowed, but if it is allowed, uh, the ashes must not be scattered. Uh, they must be uh, kept intact, and burial is to take place in a church or in a... Uh, so we have niches in churches, we have cemeteries, we have... Uh, mausoleums for reception of uh, urns of ashes. So it had to be uh, the equivalent of burying a body. That's how the ashes would be treated. They were also uh, not to be separated so some of the ashes could be kept uh, while the family buried the rest. Now they did grant an exception in 2016 uh, for the pres preservation of ashes in a residence. So some people would be able to request for an exceptional case to preserve the ashes uh, at their home. But they were not to be put, as the documents is, in mementos, jewelry, or other objects. So you're not supposed to turn uh, the mortal remains of a person who's been cremated into an item that's a piece of jewelry or some kind of memento. And it also said that the ashes should not be divided among family members, because that, of course, is a temptation. If you can keep the ashes, why not let you know all the children have a little part of their uh, parents' uh, ashes? So all that was said. Now, what do we have? Cardinal Fernandez has changed uh, the rule. They say, he said that a minimal part of the ashes can be kept in a place of significance whereas the, re the remaining portion of the ashes must be buried in a sacred place. So what this means is that you can take part of, you can divide the ashes up and you can bring them not necessarily to the home. That was the only exception in 2016. Now, a place of significance. Well, you know, significance to the deceased could vary. I mean, if a guy's a hunter, can he go to the hunting lodge and you know, have his ashes uh, encased in the wall. Um, seemingly that would be permissible under this ruling. The other thing you have to say is, if the previous permission was given to keep the whole urn of ashes in the home, now they're saying you can only keep part of them in the home and the rest have to go to a sacred place. Well, I can see people saying, why should I do that? You know, that's a pain in the neck. If the previous law granted an exception, uh, why can't I get take advantage of that also? Now, it's also, it's said that the request has to be made to ecclesiastical authority to make this division of the ashes. But, you know, people don't go to church, are not going to write a letter to the bishop you know, or the funeral home, have them do that to request this permission. They're simply going to go ahead and say the funeral home, you know, please, I, I hear the Catholic Church isn't forbidding this anymore. Let's divide this up or let's keep the whole thing. So, my overall impression is the law is poorly written. I think it's a mistake. Significant place replaces sacred place uh, or home. You know, home has a certain sacrality since we are the domestic church. But to say you can have a significant place, <laughs> you know, for a soccer player, they're going to say, well, I want to be buried, you know, under the uh, middle of the field. Uh, you know, a hockey player, can I ashes be encased, uh, you know, under the rink? Um, yeah, so... We're trivializing the whole process by saying sacrality is not the central category here now. It's the wishes of the person. So that's one of my main objections. Now, just throw in a positive thing. There is a reference to the common burial of ashes uh, in, a, in a sepulcher that the church would offer, such as you've heard of ossuaries where old bones are gathered together and placed together. They do that in New Orleans. They do that in other places. So now I think the church is being smart. People who have ashes in the home and don't know what to do with them when they sell the home and none of the kids want to keep it, now they don't have to go through the expense and trouble of purchasing a burial plot. They can simply go to the diocese and say, put this in the, uh, in the uh, common 
resting place for ashes. So I think that's a good idea. But this other one I don't like. So it clearly appears that this will open itself up to abuse. I mean, it'll become pretty easy to abuse this, as you seem to just indicate. I mean, who gets to regulate this? Who gets to choose? Who gets to decide whether someone is doing doing it appropriately or not? Uh, but I guess I want to ask a nuanced question. So is he wrong about this? I mean, are they, in fact, changing church teaching on how to handle the remains of our friends, family, and loved ones is this a is this a significant change or is this is this is what he's saying technically correct just open for abuse well the teaching of the church is reaffirmed about the resurrection of the body the doctrine doesn't have doctrinal faults in it in the sense of saying it denies some teaching of the church what it does change is how that teaching is implemented in other words what practices does the church do in order to uphold the, the teaching so for instance, the teaching that there's the resurrection of the body means that someone who cremates himself because he wants to deny that truth, he is still supposed to be denied ecclesiastical burial. So that's, uh, there's no problem there. Now, what the thing is, though, does this practice uphold the dignity and reverence that we're supposed to give to the bodies of uh, the deceased? And I'll go back and say, you know, the permission to uh, start cremation was given in the 1960s by the Vatican. I think that was a mistake. You know, cremation is an emergency uh, practice for Christians in case of plague, uh, in case of mass death and an inability to perform uh, individual burials. You remember when the Haitian earthquake happened? You know, if they had to cremate those bodies to prevent the spread of disease, the church would say that's unacceptable. But why would you take someone's body you know, burn it uh, and, and gather the ashes uh, when we, the body is called the temple of the Holy Spirit. You know, when you baptize someone, you sanctify the body. Uh, and Christian practice from this beginning, which was derived from Jewish practice largely, is we treat the res bodies with great respect. Bearing the dead is one of the corporal works of mercy. So, you know, cremation started uh, as a secular practice with some popularity with the French Revolution. And it was used by people who denied the resurrection of the body. But then in the 20th century, this becomes part of the culture of convenience. Uh, and I don't want to offend people who have cremated their family members and then put the ashes. Since the church accepts it, I'm not going to impute that they did something consciously wrong because they did what the church allowed them to do. I'm saying that the church should not have been giving that permission so freely because it would have instructed people. And... You know, we're very aware that people choose cremation often because it's less expensive and it doesn't involve purchase of a grave. You know, in the old days, the church said you can't cremate, so therefore save some money. And we, we the church opened cemeteries and, you know, tried to provide for the faithful. Now we're saying in this new document, OK, you can cremate and then you can keep part of the body. It doesn't repeat the prohibition, by the way, of putting the ashes in mementos or jewelry. So how are you supposed to preserve a small part of the ashes? No instructions are given. But again, as you say, the abuse thing, we know exactly what's going to happen. There's going to be right. a picture frame company that's going to invent the, maybe it already exists, a little module at the bottom with the ashes, and there'll be a picture of Uncle Joe. And you say, Uncle Joe is still with us. And to, not only do we have his picture, we got part of his body here. Yeah, that's, yes. That's giving rise to the wrong approach to, to dealing with, you know, praying for the soul of Uncle Joe. Uh, so, again, I'm uncomfortable with this, but I'm not going to accuse people who've done cremations of doing anything wrong because they were following what the church permitted. I just think the church should not have given this permission. Exactly. I think we, we give a counter message uh, about the dignity of the body. And, you know, there's a, I'll throw this in. I remember learning this in seminary. Some people say... What, what you really are is your soul. Your body's the envelope. So it's like a letter, envelope, a letter, and envelope. So you get the letter, you open the envelope, you throw it away, you keep the letter. No, the soul and the body both are created by God and will be with us for all of our eternity. So we respect the body. And I, I think some people have lost that sense, and we're not teaching that by saying, you know, the body can be voluntarily burned, uh, even for reasons that are essentially economic.
There is no accountability mechanism. The, the, the funeral home directors are going to say to people, you know, the Catholic Church agrees with cremation, and now they're saying you can keep part of it, so we're going to divide up the ashes for you. And then the priest is going to get a fait accompli. Bishops can issue decrees, but again, uh, the document talks about requests. I Non-practicing Catholics don't even know who their bishop is, let alone wow. write a letter to him and say, yeah. you know, go give him a call. Can I divide exactly. my ashes here? Did you like that video? It's okay. You can admit it. It's perfectly fine. Hey, we cover the big stories of our day from inside the church to outside the church to all points in between. And we do it from a Catholic perspective. It's called a Catholic take. It's a radio program Monday through Friday. We live stream it right here on this channel, by the way. So make sure to subscribe, like, and share. We would be very grateful to you. And don't forget, you're going to want to watch this video right here because you don't want to miss anything.